Good morning, team. So this week's flipped lesson is on the organelles. So as we told you last week, an organelle is a really specific part of a cell that has a really specific job in the cell. So here are your flip notes. They look a little different than they have in the past. It's a very organized table. So we've broken down the organelles into categories. We have the name of the organelle. Your job this morning is going to be to fill in the function and then what type of cell we find them in. So we have it broken down into prokaryotes and then eukaryotes and eukaryotes is further broken down to animals and plants. So you can write yes, no in there. Um, then we're also going to compare it to the part of a city that has a similar function to that organelle to give you what's called an analogy, um, a comparison that'll help you understand what that cell does. So our first two cells have to do with the control center. Yeah, All right, so our first organelle is probably the most important organelle in the cell, and it is called the nucleus. And the nucleus contains and protects the DNA. And because it contains the DNA, it's the control center of the cell. It directs all the other activities of a cell. As you know, we find the nucleus in plants and animals, and we do not find the nucleus in prokaryotic cells. Remember, pro, no. Um, that's a good way to remember that. And a good way to think about the nucleus is, how do I get to the next slide? Oh, just over. Sorry. Is to think of the DNA as the mayor and then the nucleus is the town hall. So the mayor makes the decisions, but the town hall, the building surrounds and protects the mayor. So the nucleus is your control center of the cell. Within the nucleus, we find a dark region, as you can see here in this picture, that is called the nucleolus. And there's a lot of um, discussion amongst the bio teachers how we say it. So either nucleus, nucleolus or nucleolus, either one will work. And it is this dark region here of the nucleus, and that is where RNA is made and assembled. And we're going to talk about what RNA is in more detail. Remember, it's one of your nucleic acids. Um, and same as the nucleus, it is a yes for plant, a yes for animals, and a no for prokaryotic cells. Um, and I like to think of the nucle uh, nucleolus as the city council. They kind of work alongside the mayor, the DNA, um, to help things function in our cells. Our next four cells are going to be what we classify as support organelles. So they provide support functions within our cell. So first is a vacuole, and the vacuole is like this big kind of organelle that stores items inside cells. So you can see there are things like water and salts and proteins and carbs. Um, in your plant cell, the vacuole is very large and it's usually in the center of the cell. And it can get bigger or smaller depending on how much water is inside that cell. Um, so it's usually pretty large in plants. We do find them in animals. There's usually a few of them and they're smaller in size and we do not find vacuoles inside of prokaryotic cells. A good way to think about the vacuole, a good analogy for it would be the reservoir in Burlington. In that reservoir, we store a lot of water, just like the vacuole stores water and other items for the cell. All right, up next is the lysosome. And the lysosome does a few things in our cell. It kind of breaks things down. So it can break down food particles, like our biomolecules, into its um, monomers. So it breaks or digests down those biomolecules. It can also kind of digest or break down things that are trying to invade our cells like bacteria. And it can do both of these functions by using digestive enzymes, much like we find inside our stomach. Plants do not have a lysosome, so no for plants, a yes for animals, and a no for prokaryotic cells. And I like to think of our lysosomes as like the garbage truck of the cell. It kind of um, breaks down waste, kills anything that we don't need. Um, some people will, will compare it to Lysol, kind of sounds like lysosome, and it kills uh, bacteria or other pathogens that are trying to invade our cells. 
Up next in terms of support organelles is a cytoskeleton. Much like your skeleton helps you move, the cytoskeleton helps cells to move around. So it's important in both cell movement and maintaining the shape of a cell. So it's a network of proteins, one of our biomolecules that helps maintain cell shape. It is a yes for plants, a yes for animals, and a no for prokaryotes. So I think you're probably starting to see here that prokaryotes don't have a lot going on. And here are a couple different types of your cytoskeleton uh, proteins that we will hear about throughout the year. I like to think of your cytoskeleton since it helps movement within your cell as our highway system, our road system within a city or town, as you can see right here. Up next is our centrioles, and our centrioles we're going to learn a lot about when we talk about cell division. Their main function is to help cells divide during the process of cell division. Um, and plants and animals divide a little bit differently, so we do not find centrioles in plants, so that's a no, a yes in animals, and a no in prokaryotic cells. What's up everyone, Mr. Toad here, and uh, I'm going to get us through the rest of these organelles. Um, so the next couple we're going to look at have to do with making proteins. And probably the most important organelle for that is the ribosome. And it's this little guy here. It's made up of two parts. Um, and they their job is to make proteins, right? They read messenger RNA, which is a copy of DNA, which we'll talk about that later on in the year. And uh, they make proteins. And we, we talked about proteins in our macromolecule chapter. And we'll talk about it more as we get into cellular functions later in the year. But proteins are the most important, probably, chemical of life, right? They help your body do all types of chemical reactions, get jobs done. They uh, identify things just super, super important. So these ribosomes are what make proteins. And you can see they're found in all three types of cells, plant, animal, eukaryotes, and prokaryotes. Um, so they all have proteins to help make these ribosomes. Excuse me. They all have ribosomes to help make these proteins. All right. Uh, and when we're comparing it to a town, right, the ribosomes are like factories, right? Because factories make all the goods and products that we use every day. And ribosomes make all those uh, proteins, which we use every second of every day in our cells. All right. So the next one is the ER, also known as the endoplasmic reticulum. Okay. And it's a membrane system that assembles proteins and lipids, chemically modifies proteins, and it also helps create lipids and things like your cell membrane, right? And it's kind of like an extension of the cell membrane. The cell membrane from, surrounds the whole cell uh, and, and the ER kind of branches off of it to do all these jobs. And there's two types of endoplasmic reticulum. You have the rough ER, which is really bumpy. And you can see that some of it down here, um, all these little bumps. And those bumps are actually ribosomes, okay? And then you have smooth ER, which would be like this over here with no bumps. Uh, and that's endoplasmic reticulum with no ribosomes. And again, that endoplasmic reticulum has a lot of jobs, uh, helps detoxify things, helps with lipids, helps with cell membrane. And remember, the ribosomes make proteins. So that section of endoplasmic reticulum where the ribosomes are helps make a lot of proteins. And those proteins are kind of edited and finish, finished up uh, in the endoplasmic reticulum. And again, you can see plants and animals have endoplasmic reticulum. Prokaryotes do not. All right, and again, compare it to a town, uh, it's kind of like a, the giant warehouse of the town, right? Like we're getting ready to ship stuff out, we're storing our goods here, things might be finished up, um, but we're not actually sending those goods out yet. We're not sending the proteins that the ribosomes made yet. So kind of like a warehouse in town. All right, the next one is the Golgi body or the Golgi apparatus. Uh, and this packages and sorts proteins into vesicles for transport out of the cell. And that's that word there, vesicle, right? Um, and a vesicle, I always think about it like, it sounds like the word vehicle, right? And vehicles help us move around and, and drive around and do things, right? And you can see on this, this is a Golgi body here, Golgi apparatus. I think it looks like a squished stack of pancakes from big to small. And you can see these little like round spheres that are pinching off, right? Those are those vesicles. So those vesicles, actually pinch off with protein inside of them, and they're gonna deliver that protein to where it belongs, whether it's inside the cell, uh, outside the cell, all types of different places, the nucleus, wherever it has to go. So the Golgi body packages and sorts those proteins to get delivered wherever they have to go. And again, plants and animals have them, eukaryotes have a Golgi apparatus, prokaryotes do not. So 
thinking about a town, right? Who who is in charge of packaging and sending stuff? The postal service, right? So a Golgi apparatus would be just like the post office. Uh, the postal service right sending things where they need to go all right so these next couple ones are going to jump into energy here uh and and how cells get energy so the first one is a chloroplast and it maybe you, you could see it down here and we'll talk about all the parts of it but you notice right away it's the color green and you got to think hmm well what 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 is green that we know it's a living thing plants right uh so this is where the location of photosynthesis occurs and photosynthesis converts solar energy or sunlight into glucose and if you remember way back to chapter two uh our macromolecules right anything that ends in os is a sugar a carbohydrate all right so chloroplasts uh do photosynthesis they turn sunlight into glucose sugar food all right and plants have these all right but animals do not otherwise that'd be pretty cool because we could just lay outside and do photosynthesis and get energy uh, and then prokaryotes do not have it as well. <clears throat> so what in what in town uh, helps give us food, right? Well, restaurants, okay, or the cafeteria of a school, or uh, Wendy's, hashtag four for four, all right? Uh, get that four for four, who doesn't love it? Make it an eight for eight while you're at it. But, uh, right, we have restaurants that help make us food uh, that we can use for energy. All right, the next one is mitochondria. Uh, and I'm sure you remember this one, right? The powerhouse of the cell. And just like where chloroplast is where photosynthesis occurs, mitochondria is where cell respiration occurs, that other uh, process that's paired with photosynthesis. And we'll talk a lot about that actually in the next chapter. Um, so again, mitochondria is where cell respiration occurs. It's what makes ATP a main source of energy for all cells. Uh, so again, it's that powerhouse. It turns the food into energy all right so plants and animals have mitochondria so don't think just animals have mitochondria and just plants have chloroplast right plants have both because they use that chloroplast to make food and then they use the mitochondria to break it down right animals we need to eat plants or other animals for the food and then we use our mitochondria to break it down however prokaryotes do not have mitochondria all right and this is just like, think about it in town, like where's where do we get all of our energy? Like a power plant, right? This would be like a power plant in our cell town that gives the cell or the town energy. All right, so now let's talk about uh, surroundings or borders of our cell. So we, I alluded a little bit to this in the endoplasm reticulum, but this one is the cell membrane, all right? And hopefully you remember that uh, as the outer lining of the cell. And it's really important because it controls what comes in and what leaves the cell, right? Things can't just go and come throughout the cell however they want. Uh, it's, it's highly regulated by the cell membrane. It also protects and supports the cell. So it keeps, again, it keeps invaders from coming in most of the time. Um, it provides support to the cell for structures to grab onto, right? That cytoskeleton Ms. Graham talked about plays a role in it. And it's also called the lipid bilayer is the structure. We're gonna get more into this. Uh, next week, but lipids are fats, right? With one of the macromolecules, and bi means two layers. So the lipid bi layer, the cell membrane, is literally two layers of lipids. And you could see in this smaller picture down here, right? We actually have a, a lipids out here, one layer, and then lipids on the inside, one layer. So two layers of lipids. And again, who has a cell membrane? Well, all cells have cell membranes, right? Plants, animals, prokaryotes, because all cells are contained in one unit. And the cell membrane, right? So who protects and keeps or regulates what enters and leaves the cell? It would be like the border patrol, right? Like who's coming into the country, who's leaving? All right. And then we have the cell wall. And the cell wall is a hard, right? Just like a wall, rigid structure that shapes supports and protects cells and think about it right um like my wall right here really sturdy not going to fall down i can't just go through it right i got to go around it. um so think about what cells are really rigid like this well animal cells are not right i could push my skin and it's really mushy it moves around it's fluid but if you push on a plant like if you go knock on a tree uh, or a piece of celery it's going to be really firm and that's because those have cell walls. So plants have cell walls, animals do not, 
and prokaryotes do. And we look, uh, you can see this picture right here of cell walls, right? They're all, these are all plant cells. And if you notice, you see these green organelles in here. We already talked about those. Those are chloroplasts. All right, and you can see these rigid cell wall structures here in plants. All right, and what is that like in our cell town? That's like the town border, right? It's that structural town border uh, that, that maybe like a fence, right? Almost that gives it support and outlines the whole town. All right, so guys, that's all of our organelles. So make sure you go back and uh, look over those, all right? Fill in your notes if you missed any, go back and be ready for the flip quiz when you come into class. And I'm not sure if you'll be able to click this link. I'm going to post it in the description of the video. Uh, and this is a link to the Amoeba Sisters video, uh, which kind of goes over prokaryotes and eukaryotes again. Good little review. All right. So, hey, stay tuned. Hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe. And we'll see you on the next one.